I'm glad you could join me today to learn how to make this adorable little worry worm. I'm going to uh, film this tutorial for complete beginners, but you can just speed on through if you know a portion of it, if you know how to do the slip knot, if you know how to do the chain stitch, you can just speed on through. But I want to make sure all of our friends that are just learning to crochet will know how to make this cute little worry worm. So I've decided to use, since I have beginners in mind, this tube yarn and it just makes it so easy because there's no raveling or hooking onto pieces of the fibers and leaving the rest of the fibers. So that'll be very helpful for beginners. I have a little tiny one inch wooden bead for the doll's head, the little worry worm's head. I have a five millimeter hook for this particular yarn. If you use a different kind of yarn, make sure your hook is appropriate for that type of yarn. And of course, we always need a scissor. Completely optional to all this, I am going to make a little boat around the neck and so I have just 10 inches of little grow grain ribbon. You don't have to worry about that if you don't want to. So for our complete beginners, we're going to learn how to hold the crochet hook and hold the yarn. So the rest of you can just speed on through and wait till we get to the part about the actual construction of the worry worm. So there's two ways to hold a crochet hook equally effective. I use the knife method. I hold it as if I'm holding a knife cutting my food. I have the hook in my palm of my hand. I have my pointer finger on top of the shaft of the hook and I have my thumb on this thumb rest here. And I like that. Some people like the pencil method and that's equally effective and equally acceptable. So you just hold it like you would a pencil. And you have the hook over the palm of your hand, resting between the pointer finger and the tallest finger. And you still have your thumb on the thumb rest and you use your wrist more to move your hook. And that's probably why I don't like it as much because I do have a little arthritis in my wrist. So we know how to hold our hook. Let's see how we're going to hold our yarn. Before we do that, let's do a slip knot, and then when we learn how to hold our yarn, we'll be ready to go. So, the easy way to do a slip knot is just to take your tail end of your yarn, lay it over your palm, and go around two or three fingers and make a loop. And you can slip that off your fingers, but keep pinching where the loop joins, and then drop your yarn behind that, the working end of the yarn, pick up your hook, slip it under that portion of the yarn that intersects that loop, and then drop the whole thing and take both ends of that yarn and pull it up. And then when you take the working end, pull it, you have got the perfect slip knot. Very easy. You can repeat that if you'd like to uh, get that firmer in your mind. But we're going to go ahead with this worry worm. So we're going to do 25 chain stitches. And to do a chain stitch for you complete beginners, you've got your hook held however you like it. Like I said, I've got mine in the knife position. And I have my slip knot. And I need to be able to provide some tension to this yarn or else it just runs through and, and makes too loose. Or if you hold it too tight, then it makes little tiny, tiny stitches and you can't get your hook into those stitches when it comes time to go around and crochet into those stitches. So this is how I get my tension really nice. I take the palm of my hand and I put that up and then I slip that into the yarn. I just take it almost like a scissor and get that yarn. So the yarn is between my little finger and my ring finger. 
And then I just take my palm and turn it completely upside down, 180 degrees, till my palm is facing down and you see the back of my hand. And then take your pointer finger and slip it under that yarn. And when you turn perpendicular, you are ready to go. I pinch the working portion of the crochet. In this case, we only have a slip knot. Later on, we'll have a lot of stuff here. We'll have chain stitches, we'll have all sorts of stitches, but we're gonna pinch that so that we can help open up the loop that we're working on. We want a loop that this crochet hook can easily slip in and out of, and it's gonna be shaped like a tear drop so that we can get that in and out, in and out. And we do that by pinching with our longest finger and our thumb and holding our yarn, just like you learned. So, palm up, scoop up that yarn, turn your palm completely over, take your pointer finger, go under that yarn and go perpendicular. Pinch that knot and you're ready to go. Next step is a chain stitch, and we're going to do 25 chain stitches to start our little worry worm. A chain stitch is fairly simple. You go down toward the palm of your hand with your hook. You push back toward that finger, that tall finger, you and you go up. And what's that done is you have captured that yarn that's called yarn over and you're going to pull through that lovely teardrop that you formed on your hook and you've already done one chain stitch now we're going to do it again we're going to go down push back up and we have a yarn over and we're going to pull that through that lovely teardrop down back up pull through that's three chain stitches now let's do the other 22 and I'll see you back when we have 25 chain stitches. And now I have 25 chain stitches to start my worry worm. And what this is going to be is the loop at the top of this worry worm. So we want to make it into a loop. It's just a line now, just a line of chains. So you take the stitch you're on and you come back down here to the very first stitch and put your hook right in that and we're going to do a slip stitch and a slip stitch just attaches things you'll join things with a slip stitch so you'll use that quite a bit I think I shouldn't have that right there and you'll go yarn over you'll pull through that loop and pull through the loop that's on the hook. So you haven't really made a stitch, you have just slipped your loose yarn through both ends of that and joined that together. So now we have the hanging portion of our worry worm. So to finish the worry worm, we're gonna do 25 more chains and I'll meet you back at the end of those 25 chains.
22, 23, 24, 25. I've done 25 chains. Here's where it gets fun. We're going to learn to do a half double crochet and we're going to, we've got one long line. If you're a beginner, you don't know where do you go next. We're going to crochet in to this chain. And how do we do that? For half double crochet, we actually take, we have a loop on our crochet hook. We have a stitch below below all those stitches look like V's you can see them all down this row and so you don't go into the first V the first chain stitch we're gonna go into the second one and to do a half double crochet we're going to yarn over and remember how we did yarn over we did down back and up and that's a yarn over and now we're going to go into that second chain stitch now we do another yarn over and pull it through. And what we have now are three loops on our hook. And half double crochet is so easy because we're gonna yarn over and we're gonna pull through all three of those loops. Now, to make this curly, we're gonna do three of those half double crochets into each one of those stitches. And you might think you can't do that, but you watch, you can. Already, we've done one half double crochet into that one single chain stitch. And look at, we've already opened up a little opening here. So we have room. We're gonna do yarn over, go back into that same hole, that same stitch, yarn over, pull through. Again, we have three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three of those loops. And we're gonna do one more. Yarn over, go into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Now let's go through and do that with each one of these chains. Yarn over, go into the very next chain, Yarn over, pull through. I have three loops. Yarn over, pull through all three. Let's keep going. Three in each chain stitch. And you can see it's already starting to curl. This is what makes it curl. Look at it start to curl. So I'm going to go ahead and do three half double crochets in each one of these chains and I want you to do the same thing and I'll meet you at the top.
Now I have done three half double crochets into each one of those chain stitches and now I want to fasten this off and I'm going to go in to a stitch. You could pick any one that's right in here. What we're trying to do is join this up with our start. So I'm going to go right in here. Pull it through and we're just going to do a slip stitch like we did before. We're just going to go in, yarn over and pull that all the way through here. And then We'll do a knot. The way you do a knot is to do yarn over, pull through, pull up, and we're going to cut and then keep on pulling. And that makes a nice knot. But I want to make it even firmer. So I take my two loose ends, my original one and my new end, and I make a couple more knots. That's going to be hidden by the bead, so we don't have to worry too much about what that looks like. I'll just do one more. I don't want my little worry worm to come apart. And then I'll snip them off just fairly short. Now this doesn't look much like a worry worm, but you just twist. Just start twisting, 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 and you'll see it will all start twisting in the right direction. It's like a corkscrew. Just keep twisting in the same direction. Twisting, 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 and you have your little worry worm body. Now we have our bead that we want to get on to our worm. And I take a smaller crochet hook. They say that this is 5.5 .5 millimeter hole, but I can't get my 5 millimeter hook in there. But I can get my 4 millimeter hook. So we're going to pass it through from top to bottom and we're just going to hook that cord we made and pull it on through and you can be pretty darn firm with this. It's not going to hurt it. Just pull that on up and pull that head all the way down and let's pull it tight. Let's pull it as tight as we can pull it. Won't hurt that little worry worm at all. See, she's still smiling. Take a little knot right here in your loop. Have the knot as close to the little bead head as you can and it still gives you a loop and there's your worry worm and you could tie the ribbon around the neck make a bow just like I did this ribbon if you want on this worry worm and that's how you make your worry worm <laughs>